Good morning, emailers. Hey, it's a beautiful sunny day, beautiful Saturday morning here outside Chicago. My friend Pat called me this morning and was asking me some really good questions about list systems versus tag systems in email. He was asking, what's all this segmenting about? How does Ryan Dice do that stuff with the machine? Um, Pat's on AWeber, so he was confused as to what tags mean and how that works. So, to help Pat out, I thought I'd make a video. And, of course, I've turned to my favorite thing ever, Lucidchart. I love Lucidchart. So I thought I'd make this video and then share it with everyone. So let's get into this, talk a little bit about list-based versus tag-based email systems. An exciting topic for a Saturday morning. All right, first we're going to start out with the list-based systems. These are things like AWeber, MailChimp, Constant Contact. Although AWeber is working on moving towards tags, they've added some tags in there. They don't, they're still not a full tag-based system as far as I can tell. Uh, but definitely MailChimp, Constant Contact, these are list-based systems. These are what most people are used to in email systems. So I've got some examples here. If somebody comes to your website, you're a pet store, and they sign up on your email list, and they uh, sign up on a lead magnet you have for cats, the I Crave Cats list. In a list-based system, you would have separate lists for each pet type. You got, I crave cats, I dig dogs, I prefer parrots, I love lemurs. So if you are a cat person, you're going to be cat at emailsplat.com. You're going to be on the, you're going to start getting emails, you know, the buy my cat stuff, the more about cats email. These would be autoresponders. In a list-based system, the list gets the same autoresponder. So if you want one specific to cats, you're going to have to have a cat list. If you want an autoresponder specific to dogs, you're going to need a dog list. Now, what happens if the cat guy comes along and says, I also own a parrot, so now I want the parrot stuff? Well, in a list-based system, the cat email is going to be in the system twice as two separate contacts, one on the I Crave Cats list and one on the I Prefer Parrots list. Again, if a dog guy comes along and also has a lemur, the dog email address will be duplicated and he will be on two separate lists with the same email address. Got that? So a list, we're making a list of people um, specific to that topic. One list, one autoresponder for that list. Now, what happens if I want to send a broadcast? I want to send a message to everybody who owns a cat. Well, that's pretty easy because I'm going to send to the cat list, I'm going to send an email about cats. Now, to me, a broadcast means it's a specific time. Like, I just woke up this morning and, hey, I want to send an email to my list. I'm going to broadcast out a message. It's not an everybody on the list is going to get that message at the same time. It's not a uh, autoresponder where it's going to depend on where they are in the system. A broadcast is everybody's getting the email at the same time. So if I want to broadcast to the cat list, really simple, pull up the cat list, send them an email. Same with dogs, parrots, lemurs. But if I want to send an email, a broadcast message to everybody on my list, now I'm going to broadcast to all pet owners. Well, in order to do that, I'm going to have to send it to each of my four lists. Now in some systems, <clears throat> MailChimp, uh, if we go back here to my cat person, if they're on the cat list and the parrot list, and I do a broadcast to all my lists, they're going to get that email twice. Other systems are a little more intelligent. I believe AWeber doesn't do that. But in MailChimp, everybody, if they're on two lists, they're going to get the email twice. The only way to prevent that in a system like MailChimp is to make a master list and then manually move all your lists to it so when you want to send out a list to ev uh, email to everyone you've got a master list but now you're duplicating content tax and you're paying for all your contacts twice pain in the butt a different way to do it would be to have one list that you called pet owners and when I signed up as a pet owner you could have a custom field that you made 
that they would identify what kind of pet they had. So then it would say, hey, buy my pet type stuff. So here it would fill in cat or dog or lemur. Now again, one autoresponder. So I'm going to have to make the same autoresponder for everyone, and they're going to get the same message other than the name of the pet is going to be replaced. So I couldn't have special specific to cats. I couldn't have, I couldn't send you to a specific page about dogs because everyone's getting the same email. A little harder to do. But when I get to the broadcast, now that gets nicer because everyone's on one list. I can send out a broadcast to all pet owners. Then I get down here to segments. This is where it starts to get confusing because you can segment a list. So based on the fact that people said I was a cat, you know, this custom field was cat, I could make a segment of cat owners. I could make a segment of dogs, parrots, lemurs. So then I could broadcast to just that segment. That might be nicer. This way, if I do a broadcast to everyone, they're only going to get the email once, even if uh, they're on the cat segment and the parrot segment. But the way I've just described it, it wouldn't be possible to do because this is segmenting based on my custom field, and my custom field has to be one value. I can't have a cat custom field and a parrot in the same custom field. They would, it, you would have to pick one or the other. All right, these are the drawbacks to a list-based system. Now, let's move over to a tag-based system. Let's talk about tags. Tag-based. So these are systems like ActiveCampaign and FusionSoft Entreport, which I'm sure you've heard me talk about these before. These are tag-based systems. Now, here's the big difference between a tag and a list. With the tag-based system, everyone is on my list once. Usually they're um, by email address. So if I ever came back and tried to sign up a second time as a dog owner when I was originally a cat owner, it's going to look at my, if I use the same email address, it's going to look at that and say, oh, he's got both. So here, it's by your email address. So cat, I can tag them as a cat owner. And I can put them on an autoresponder sequence that's cat welcome. Same with dog. I tag them as a dog owner. They go on a sequence that's dog welcome. But here comes my parrot guy. I tag him as a parrot, but he also has a cat. We can do that. We can tag him as a cat owner. Now he's going to get the parrot welcome and the cat welcome. Same thing with lemur. We tag him as lemur. He could get dog as well. Now we can set up a lot of rules based off of these tags or these sequences. See, with, with a, with a tag-based system, there's a lot of rules involved in the background. You can do just about anything you want based off of a tag or even what they did, what they clicked on, what they went to. Very powerful stuff. So in this case, if he originally signed up as a parrot owner and was getting parrot autoresponders, well, two weeks later, if he signed up as a cat owner and I didn't want him to get conflicting emails, I could pause the parrot welcome emails and start the cat, or I could just say don't start the cat until he's finished with the parrot. Um, very powerful stuff. You can really set up a lot of rules to do whatever you want. Now, um, so that's the different welcome sequences. So notice that these uh, sequences aren't associated with a list that's totally free form. I can just take people from dog and I can move them down to the dog sequence. Again, they could also be on lemur, they could be on parrot, they could be on anything. It's totally free-flowing. So these would be my autoresponders that are going out based on what lead magnet they asked for. Now, what if I want to do a broadcast? I want to do a broadcast all super simple because everybody's on one database, one entire list. So I just say, send it to the whole list. Pretty simple. But if I wanted to send a broadcast to my cat people... Again, really easy, because I'm just going to look for anybody who has the tag cat. I want to broadcast to my dog list. I'm going to look for anybody that has the tag dog, and so on. Very simple to do broadcasts. People are not going to get um, 
if I do the broadcast all, they're not going to get four emails from me because they're tagged as cat, dog, parrot, lemur, like they would in a list-based system, possibly, depending on which one you're on. So that's the real basics of list versus tag. Tag gives you a lot more power. Uh, list a little simpler uh, as far as probably setting up in the beginning, but a lot more limiting because your autoresponders are limited to one per list in most of these systems. So tags, I can go crazy, I can do anything. Lists, a lot more limiting. All right, there you go. Uh, my quick overview of lists versus tags. You got any questions, hit me up in the Facebook group. Hope that clears some things up for people. Thanks for listening on a Saturday morning.